Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. It is a beautiful fall day, light breeze, sun is high in the sky, I'm loving it. Today's video is about, I gotta get this truck outfitted for the winter. I'm gonna show you guys the things that I need in my truck that I think every Canadian feller or any feller or lady driving a truck needs in a winter climate like this. Summer, it's not so bad, but winter, you gotta make sure that you can get in and out of any situation. What I will encounter this winter is high winds, heavy snow, snow blowing in on the roads, you know, low visibility. Other people that are stuck or in the event that I might get stuck I got to have gear ready to go I got to be prepared for anything that I might encounter so without further ado I'm gonna show you guys the things that I think every Canadian feller needs in his winter rig yeah I'm gonna go over a few things that I think every truck up here needs permanently mounted these aren't things you carry around in the bed or the back seat these are things that I think every truck needs Number one, a tow point. This truck has a super heavy tow point that they installed through the bumper. Perfect. It's there all the time and ready when I find somebody stuck and need to pull them out from the front. Also, winter front. I got mounts for winter front and this thing came with a factory winter front. Gotta have that to keep the uh, temperature warm. Now along with that, one thing Ford had that I don't think anybody else had in this generation with Ford, you could buy this thing, and this is an RPM controller and a charge protector. You can keep your RPMs up, set your idle, so that if you're running a PTO or a winch or a slip tank or whatever, and you want to keep the RPMs up to keep the juice flowing, this will do it. And also, corresponding with the winter front, I can have this thing idle by hitting a button at 1300 rpm or 1700 etc and i could just turn the rpms up and down to keep this thing warm uh that is wow good job ford now corresponding with that my last truck had one of them chevy push button uh four-wheel drive systems and it would always shift but it took a while this thing click done uh that's a must because we we have a rule out here if you're driving back woods here or, you know, the back roads, you drive around in two-wheel drive. And the reason for that is if you get stuck in two-wheel drive, you can go, there you go, four-wheel drive, back out of it, and go, wow, that was a close one. If you're in four-wheel drive and you suddenly get stuck, well, guess what? You're phoning your brother or your neighbor up the road to come and get you, and hopefully they can, or you're walking. A heavy truck has to have a brake controller. And, of course... You gotta have locking hubs. This one has a nice set of warns on it. They work great. I might replace them, but just as a maintenance issue, but they seem to work just fine. Locking hubs and some good knobby tires. These are not as knobby as the ones on my Chevy, but I think they'll be just fine. Uh, these are 285, 75, 16, 10 plies, and they'll fit the bill. Now, along with that is you need a truck with good ground clearance, this truck's super tall. I don't foresee this truck getting stuck. I spread out random junk that I generally will keep in my truck. Let's go through it all and I'll tell you guys what it is and why I keep it. Okay, friends, this is in no particular order. Um, number one thing I always keep in my vehicle in summer, winter time, this is useless. I always keep water in my vehicle because sometimes I'll be out cutting and I'll get really dehydrated and I bring water with me, but it's like, it's always good to have truck water. You guys can see this thing smashed and dented. Um, this thing's always rolling around in my work truck. I always bring extra water with me. That's super important here in the heat. Hard hat. I always have a hard hat in my vehicles. Do I need it at home? No, but being a construction worker, this is just mandatory PPE. I pretty much always have a hard hat with me. Also, friends, when I go cutting, my hard hat's always in my truck, so that's an important piece of gear. 
chainsaw. I usually have one chainsaw in my truck. Uh, right now, my preferred truck unit is this Husqvarna 242 XPG. Why? Well, it's super lightweight. It usually starts pretty good. Okay, it starts easy. It's super small. This thing packs a wall up. This is a, this is a strong little saw. And it's got heated grips. So, I mean, friends, at the very least, if I encounter a down branch or somewhere, I'm, I'm in the back roads, it's nice to have a saw. I'll take the bar and chain off and I throw it in my toolbox, but it's ready to go. Also, in wintertime, if there's a situation where my hands get really cold, well, guess what? I could fire this thing up, turn the heated grips on, and I could use this as a hand warmer. Just put it on fast idle and hold on to it and I could warm my hands up with this before I get frostbite so great thing to have also you now have fuel and oil with you if you needed to start a fire well I always got gasoline ready to go um, I could attempt to keep myself warm if I get stuck out here so chainsaw is a super handy thing to have probably number one thing people never have these when I'm on job sites at work or back roading or wherever in winter here, booster cables. If you live in this climate, inevitably, you are gonna need a battery, okay? You're gonna freeze your battery, you're gonna drain your battery, you're gonna need a boost. In today's day and age, most people will give you a boost, but most people don't have booster cables. I always rock a set. I have boosted so many people with these. And uh, these are like zero gauge, heavy, heavy cables. I could boost anything I want with this. And uh, they're like 30 feet long, 25, 30 feet long. So I can always get to what I'm boosting. This is one of the things that nobody ever carries anymore, but I think, I think this is like a must have. Okay. Washer fluid, gotta have lots of washer fluid here in winter because they salt and sand the roads and you will you will not be able to see if you run out of washer fluid and you can't use water because it freezes. So washer fluid, diesel treatment. I've been running this stuff, uh, Milligan Biofuels. Uh, it smells like linseed oil, but uh, my truck seems to start and run nicer. I get slightly better fuel economy with it and it uh, puts lubricity into that modern diesel that a lot of us don't like. Brake fluid, power steering fluid, oil you know i carry i carry some antifreeze i don't usually need that stuff but if i get broken down and i need to limp my truck somewhere it's nice to have fluids around i always carry this is a two inch i carry a two inch a two or a one and seven eighths and a two and five sixteenths i have several two and five sixteenths because pretty much every trailer i tow is super heavy and if you got a tall truck really uh this is my go-to trailer hitch it's fully adjustable uh, i can put different heads on it i got you know you gotta have a few of these i guess at least i do a feller can never have enough receivers i run this thing a lot and uh it's been good to go and again i put a kurt xd extra duty hitch on this thing uh, this is like a 17,000 pound hitch, friends. Uh, I put more hitch than this truck will ever need because uh, I don't like to worry about whether my hitch is going to take whatever I hook this thing up to. So that's a must. Okay, next on the list, a feller needs tie downs. You can never have enough. I got, you know, I got 5,000 pound tie downs. I got loops in here for wrapping axles. Basically, Whatever I put on my trailer, I want to make sure I got bungee cords. I want to make sure I could strap it down and not be that guy with his load on the side of the road upside down. My buddy sent me a video or a picture the other day. He sold a tractor to a guy and I guess the guy didn't tie it down properly. And what I got was a picture of that tractor upside down on the freeway. True story. You don't want to be that guy. So I always have strapping etc etc I pretty much always have a, a medium to light duty chain with me these are good if I'm dragging uh, you know 
dragging equipment or you know trying to pull something closer to the truck uh, i pull logs out of the bush skidding with these um, i'm not always a huge chain guy but you know a good 20 foot 25 foot chain light duty chain um can get you out of a bind usually put a grade 8 bolt in one end not two sets of hooks um that way i can bolt it to itself and make any scenario work so um feller's gotta have chain in this truck right now next this is just a, a light this is a 2000 pound winch just something small but a feller needs a winch i think um I would like to mount like a 15k industrial winch on the front of this truck and I have the mount for it I just got to find the right winch but I think a good winch if you have a good winch here and enough straps you could get yourself out of more trouble than you could ever get into and pulling people out with a winch is way nicer than uh, beating on your truck so uh, a good winch uh, this one I keep in my truck I like this one just for pulling logs out of the bush because a lot of times I'm pulling logs out super far and what ends up happening is I got a long strap on my truck and I don't have enough room to pull it out so I'm I'm retying up my strap and you know the, with this thing you can just wheel her out you know stick her onto the log and just pull her out and not have to move your truck and again with that high idle controller I have I can keep the juice full and, and keep this thing happy got it wrapped up I like this small one because it fits in a bin nicely and it doesn't take up a ton of space with the remote for it and it works good again super light duty but something that's very handy to have I always have one of these in my truck it's usually going straight across the back uh, a load bar friends it, I never really see guys using these in their pickups but these things are great like it's fully adjustable super heavy duty and it locks into place um they use these in semi-trailers my brother turned me on to this and uh this is just an industrial load bar i use it i'll put it across my bed um say you have a slip tank in there or something and you don't have proper mounts to tie it down put the load bed across over top of your slip tank especially if you have a round one and it'll hold it in place and you can strap it down to the load bar and uh it's just a little added bit of insurance for your load if you got firewood stocked in here or whatever, put your load bar across the back of it and it won't fall backwards. Um, I really like having these. I think they're a super handy thing to keep in your truck. And I mean, they are kind of big, but this thing folds down, you know, and you can put it across the back of the bed, you know, behind your toolbox or something, and nobody will even know it's there. Okay. One last thing, and then we'll get to the more technical, you know, thing. I always carry a torque wrench, friends. Um, always. I always have a torque wrench in my vehicle. If you've ever lost a wheel on your rig, I used to work at a tire shop, friends. The amount of people that would over-tighten a stud and it would break on the highway, that is catastrophic. You will take the fenders off your truck. Oh, it's a mess. You end up in the ditch, tow bill. I always carry a torque wrench under the back seat of every truck I've ever owned with the with the you know with the right socket so that if I do have uh, a flat tire I can get that thing rocking and rolling next gotta have a super heavy tow ring I got a bunch of these a D ring okay that way I can loop a strap to that front tow point in my truck and then use this to attach to the vehicle or attach this to the tow point, right? And just loop around something on the vehicle and pull it out. So, gotta have that. And again, friends, even if you don't have a strap, if you have a tow point on the front of your truck, uh, I'm more inclined to pull you out because I ain't gonna pull your bumper off, right? Right here, this strap has been with me for many years. You guys can see it's been used many, many times. Uh, this is like a 30,000 pound tow strap. It's starting to fray a little bit. I had a situation, uh, I pulled out a vehicle in the ditch uh, out here with my skid steer. I frayed it a little bit. I may be inclined to replace this this year, but uh, it still works good. Um, this thing's like 30 feet long and it does the job. That way I could pull out whatever. This strap will not break. I've pulled out some heavy things with this strap. 
And friends, one day I was on the job site in my 6.5 turbo diesel and we got a major storm and I was driving around and I encountered like five trucks in a development. Guys, you know, guys that lived in that development, they all had four wheel drive pickup trucks. None of them had good tires. None of them had a tow strap, a shovel. They were all stuck. Uh, one guy had a tow strap and he was trying to pull out another guy. He got stuck and then they hooked that tow strap up to the next truck. Anyways, friends, I rolled in in my winter rig because these, these fellers were not having a good day. And I pulled them all out with my turbo diesel and all my gear. In about five minutes, they're all out. But you know what the best part about that, friends, is? I'm going to lean down here. The following week, I was driving a two-wheel drive, three-quarter ton service van at work. Guess who got stuck that time? This feller. The road was kind of blown in and I hit a corner and it was just complete chaos. I couldn't stop. I was going too slow and I didn't make it through the snow. I got stuck in my heavy three-quarter ton truck. Well, guess what happened, friends? Karma came a rolling. I was in trouble. I was like, oh, this, I'm going to be here all day. Couldn't get traction to get out. I had a shovel and stuff like that. Well, guess who came and pulled me out? One of them fellers that I pulled out the week before came running out of his house. Hey, I remember you. Let me get my truck going. Well, friends, he got me out. And the other fellers that I pulled out were also home and they helped shovel. So teamwork makes the dream work. That's how us Canadians roll. And uh, I'd rather be the guy pulling people out than the guy getting pulled out. But every once in a while, somebody needs a hand. So big strap like this. Uh, all kinds of different, you know, this goes along with your, your towing gear. You know, I, my plug is in the bed of this thing and, uh, you know, different plugs and adapters so that no matter what I hook up to, I can, I can get lights on it or enough lights that the, uh, people will pull me over. I always have one of these friends. Uh, a power inverter. This is just a cheap one. It works fine. Uh, I could charge my phone and plug in, you know, plug in my phone fast charger. If you're a YouTuber and you're on site filming, you know, I always have a spare charger for my phone in the truck, in all my vehicles, and that way I can charge while I'm driving. A good million candle power or five million, whatever you can get. I want to get the one. This is a DeWalt. They have one of these with four on it now, friends. I want four times the power okay i always have one of these um these big batteries this thing will give me light for i don't even know friends i've used this as light at work for a 12 hour shift with one battery and it'll just keep going and then gone and used it the next day so this would give me probably easily a day or two of light and i could just leave it on and not worry about it so um if you hop out in the middle of the night and you're out here it's pitch black it's nice to hang this off the front and at least you got you know at least you got a really heavy duty high intensity light you could also flash it at people far away if they're trying to find you gotta have a good light and last but not least friends well second last i got one more thing that's not in the bed i always carry a tire puncture kit i've had these for i don't know Probably going on 25 years. Uh, I started as a tire buster when I was 16. Okay, working at tire shops. And I always carry plugs. Now, you can accompany that. If you're going off-roading, you can bring an air tank with you. That way, if you get a flat, you can jam plugs in it. Or screw in your tire or something. Stop the leak and then pump your tire back up. Now, what I'm going to do on this truck, friends, I'm putting airbags in here and a compressor and what i'm actually going to do is i'm going to plumb in a small air tank with a tire valve and i'm going to carry an air hose on my truck so that i can fill up my own tires anytime i want now the last thing that i think every feller needs in his vehicle out here in winter is right here i think every feller for his canadian back road and getting stuff done machine needs a slip tank I purchased this one at an auction. It was number 11. She's been around a day or two, but she's clean inside. Looks good. This is a uh, West Steel. Uh, any of you locals will know this company. Uh, I believe these are made in Manitoba, so even better. 
It's a 50 gallon slip tank. It does have some fuel in it. it smells a little varnishy. We'll do another video on this. I gotta get this thing cleaned up. But this thing here, friends, I could have an additional 50 gallons of fuel on my truck at all times. That's gonna get me places. So now I bought this one. I happen to get it cheap, just locked out. That's the fun of an auction. And uh, I couldn't even buy the, the uh, pump for what I paid for this thing. So this is gonna be a little bit of a project. And again, you just clip it on, clip it on to your power source and you have power. So I can either wire this to my truck or just grab power off my skid steer or whatever I'm fueling up and get this thing rocking and rolling. It does need a hose, but it's all there, friends. It's clean inside, and I think this is this is just an awesome thing for me. Because let's be honest, uh, I'll show you guys right now. When it's winter time here, old Gail, she's not the thirstiest of girls. She needs a bath, friends. Oh, she's dirty. It's true. She's a working rig. She's not a going uptown rig. She's a good old girl, though. We're gonna clean her up soon. But in winter time here, friends. You gotta fill up old Gale once in a while, and this thing is chin height for me, or chest height. This thing holds like four, you know, this thing holds about 100 liters of fuel. And uh, it takes a while to fill this up with jerry cans, and when it's 40 below, that's not fun. So your other option is to load this thing up on your trailer and take her to town and fill her up. Well, there's an hour of your day gone. So by the time you warm up your towing rig, defrost, everything get this thing running load it up strap it down drive there fill it up so that's why i said to myself let's get me a slip tank it's a must have for this guy now a few things that i didn't show on video that i didn't list because it's not that time of the year yet winter clothing i always carry snow pants and a jacket and a good pair of gloves and good boots Good boots here, typically you want minus 80 Celsius. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit, probably about minus six to 8,000. Um, <laughs> you want something, if I, if I get stuck and I gotta walk, friends, I don't want my feet to get cold. If your feet get cold, you're in a lot of trouble here. And uh, I don't wanna lose toes and stuff like that because I got frostbite. So that stuff is mandatory here. A good shovel and a good toolkit. Uh, uh, a decent small toolkit will get you out of trouble. Maybe put some baling twine in there, zip ties, a hammer, a pair of vice grips, and that way at least you can fight the good fight. If you get stuck or something breaks, maybe you can patch it together. Anyhow, friends, maybe, am I nuts? Is that too much stuff to keep in one truck? Uh, I'm not sure, but it, it feels just right for this climate. Um, maybe some of you don't carry all that stuff in your truck, but uh, that's how I roll. Anyhow, friends. Thanks for watching, take her easy, and I'll see you in a couple days, later.